Hello and welcome to another Motion Industries how-to video. My name is Tom Clark, I'm your host, and on today's how-to, we're going to discuss how to install taper lock bushings into a sheave. So let me bring on my special guest right now, Dave Felt, he's from Baldor. Hey Dave, how are you, man? Hello Tom, I'm doing well, thank you. We got lots of tools, we got something here, I'm not quite sure what it is, so uh, I'm gonna ask you, what are we gonna be doing today, man? Well Tom, today we're going to review the procedures for installing taper lock bushings into a sheave. This procedure is the same for installing a taper lock bushing into a sprocket, a pulley, or anything that has a taper lock hub. Oh, oh, time out. I need a 20 right here. Uh, what is a taper lock bushing? A taper lock bushing is a locking device which has a tapered outside diameter matching the taper lock hub which has a matching tapered bore. Installing a taper lock bushing requires the tightening of mounting set screws which draws the tapered surfaces of the bushing and the hub together. And these set screws also partially perform the function of a key. I'm getting it now. Forcing the mating tapers together creates a wedging action between the hub and the bushing. Due to this taper, the bushings grip tight, holds tight, and runs true with no wobble. So we're talking about a more sturdy grip here. Correct. Okay. The bushing has a saw slot, which allows it to grip the shaft tightly under this wedging action. Torques transmitted by the key in the keyway and the set screws. And this applies to what kind of products? Dave? Well, taper lock bushings are used in various products like a shiv, sprocket, coupling hub, etc. This bushing style is also used with other products where taper lock adapters or weld on hubs are used. Okay. This installation process is applicable wherever taper lock bushings are being installed. All right, great. So where do we start, man? First, let me explain why using proper mounting procedure is so crucial. Okay, I'm all ears, buddy. Suppose, for example, you buy a new set of tires for your car or your truck, mm -hmm. and the mechanic does not properly tighten the lug nuts on the wheel. The end result would be a serious problem. I'm, I'm going to give him one right across the chops if he doesn't <laughs> tighten my tires. You, you may notice a vibration and stop before the wheel comes off, but mm -hmm. failure to notice the vibration would surely lead to a wheel coming off. Yeah. Depending on where you are and how fast you're going, your vehicle could suffer serious damage. Yeah, and we obviously don't want anything like that. I hope that not. That's dangerous. That's similar to why it's important to use a proper mounting for a power transmission system as well. An improper mount can cause components to come loose, which will lead to equipment damage and possibly personal injury. All right, Dave, teach me, but before we get started, we have to remind everybody, PPE, personal protective equipment, always, whatever it relates to, to your job, make sure you do it. We got our glasses on, we good to go? Yeah, we're good to go. Okay. Let's talk about the tools that we might need for installing a taper lock bushing. First off, it's important to have a torque wrench available. An adjustable torque wrench will enable you to set the set screws to the proper torque as outlined in the instruction manual. And also, as we prep the shaft, it's important to have a good sturdy emery cloth that enables you to clean the shaft to make sure we don't have any contaminants on the shaft or anything like that. All right. If you do have shaft burrs of some kind, certainly a rat tail file would be helpful there as well. Okay, where do we go? First step is to clean all the components, including the shaft, the bore of the bushing, the outside of the bushing, the hub bore, and make sure that that's all free of oil, dirt, paint, any kind type of contaminants. All right, I don't see any burrs, so I'm gonna drop the file, but I'll uh, I'll start here. Okay. All right. Great, Tom. I, th right. I think that looks wonderful. Okay. Uh, what we w next wanna do is we wanna take the bushing in the hub and insert that in a line such that we have threading on only one side of each of the holes. So let me position this correctly. All right, and we're gonna slide that up here on the shaft? That's correct. All right. So we slide this on so that the keyway of the bushing matches, the key of the bushing matches the keyway of the shaft that we're mounting on to. Next, Tom, if you would, let's insert those Allen head screws in the proper locations. All right. Now how are we gonna know how tight to make these? Well, if in the instruction manual, for each bushing size, there's a torque value that's required to s properly seat the set screws. And for a 1610 bushing that we've got here, we need 175 pound inches of torque. And the way we measure that, we would certainly use an adjustable torque wrench to ensure that we have those seated correctly. Okay. And we're doing this just like we do it on a car if we're tightening the lug nuts, that's right? We go back and forth? That's correct. You should alternate from one set screw to the other until seated. And then we would use our torque wrench to make sure that we've got this torqued correctly to the amount listed in the instruction manual. We're all set to go. We've got that properly mounted, and uh, it's it's rigid to the shaft and certainly uh, sturdy. It does. It feels secure. It feels locked in. Feels like we're good to go. And we're not going to get any wobble. Right. In some cases, you might. This was a loose key application. You certainly could use a punch and a mallet to to help punch that key and position it so that it stays in position and does not come back out of the bushing. Well, thanks, Dave. I appreciate the demonstration today. Excellent. 
and uh, I'm going to make sure to keep an eye on my mechanic just Thank in case. You. Thank you, Tom. That's Dave Felt. He's from Baldor. And if you have any information that you'd like, you can always go to your nearest Motion Industries branch location. They'll help you out. Hopefully, this will help with your practical application. And uh, don't forget, PPE, no matter what the job is, make sure you're wearing the proper PPE for safety. That's our how-to video for today. Don't forget to look for other how-to videos from Motion Industries. Thanks so much for watching.